This video is brought to you by patreon.com backslash sip to tally. Join the Patreon for exclusive vids, early release vids, on-screen shoutouts, access to members-only giveaways, and added monthly tally points. Hop on over to patreon.com backslash sip to tally to see which one of the four tiers fits for you. Now let's get started. Welcome back to the channel, and you guys know I've been a fan of Pat Queen for a long time. There's no hiding it, no no faking it, no fronting it. Even in my Twitter name, it says Pat Queen Stan, but you guys know I change that from time to twi time. to time. I've uh, been a Pat, Pat Queen fan since he's been on the team. Even when he was playing bad, I was defending him, saying give it time, give it time, give it time. A lot of people didn't want to give it time, but I was one of the ones that can now say I told you so. Don't want to be that guy, but it is what it is. So I'm um, looking at the game Sunday. I really wanted to kind of give like a Pat Queen appreciation video for, you know, not just his play of late, but just an overall of what I saw and some not some some not so obvious play of, of what he did. I, want, I got a few numbers I want to throw out there, but it, it's one thing and it's one stat that I really want to highlight that was one of the things that people really criticized him for that he's really improved on year by year by year. And the number right now, it is amazing. And I don't know if, if people even realize it yet, but when I say this number, it's going to be crazy. But just the other numbers before we get to the video. Pat Queen, he's on pace for 150 tackles. I uh, got 8.8 .8, uh, tackles per game right now, and that's solo and assisted. So he's right around nine tackles a game, and Multiply that times 17, right around 150, give or take a few. Um, so, you know, that's where it's at. Now, I go over to PFF to get a few numbers and whatnot, and, you know, like it or love it, PFF, it is what it is. So, PFF, he's rated the 12th best linebacker in the game. Like, of all the linebackers, inside linebackers, you know, that play that position, he's rated the 12th. Uh, versus the run, he's number 13, which is still good. In pass rush, and we know PQ is a real good blitzer. He's the sixth best rated linebacker, you know, as far as blitzing and from the inside linebacker position. Falls off a little bit in coverage. He's the 21st linebacker in coverage. Now, this is the number that really has that people hated PQ for. And the reason I was like, just give it time. He's going to get better at it. Just give it time. But people hated him, wanted him off the team. Trade him, get, cut him, go find another linebacker, whatever. As a rookie, as a rookie, PQ's missed tackle percentage was 18.3. 18.3. The next year he came back, it was 17.5. It was 17.5. His third year, last year, played about, what, six or seven games without Roquan. Roquan came like week seven, week eight, whatever it was. He finished with 14.7, his missed tackle percentage, meaning he missed tackles 14.7% of, of the time. As of week six, as of week six, PQ's missed tackle percentage is his number. Six. That's his missed tackle percentage. Six. Actually, it's 6.4. But still, to go from 18.3 to 6.4, I told y'all to wait. I told y'all to wait. And if I can find that picture of me doing this, I'm going to put it up on the screen right now. <laughs> Let's get into the video. All right, let's take it to the grass right here. But before we get to the grass, if you have not subscribed, consider subscribing. And when you do, hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop for the Raven flock throughout the 2023 season. But let's get started here. PQ, Pat Queen, one of my favorite Ravens. You see him coming in motion. And well, their guy's going in motion. I think that's Tajay Spears. And that was a little miscommunication with him and Roquan to start off with. But what I like about it, him and Roquan do a good job of communicating. They have, like, literally, literally 
solidified the communication issues that I don't want to throw Chuck Clark under the bus, but we had, I think it was more so Wink than Chuck Clark, but we had a lot of communication issues with those two, somewhere between those two, but they have solidified the, the communication issues. And so Roquan takes Tajay Spears and Queen just kind of plays the rover position. And so with them doing this screen and they have numbers, if you look at the blockers, because the Titans have numbers, they got a guy for him, a guy for him. And so if Queen misses, this could be a touchdown for whoever this receiver is for the Titans. Because, see, they got numbers. It's three on three. It's three on three. Queen is the only free guy. Solid tackle. Solid tackle. That's Chris Moore. And so if Queen misses that tackle on Chris Moore, that's probably a touchdown. And that goes back to that tackling percentage that just went down drastically. Went down drastically. Let's go to the next one. See him spot shadowed again. And again, this is where, and I don't know how many of you used to watch the NFL Network way back when Warren Sapp was on there. He always used to say the front end and the back end work together. Now, I know Queen is a middle of the defense player, but still, this is an example of that front end and that back end working together because Queen's going to get the pressure. He's going to get the pressure on the QB. Like Derrick Henry barely gets a piece of him, but he speeds up Ryan Tannehill. Watch Marcus Williams break on this. And I wholeheartedly believe if Marcus Williams had two healthy arms, this is an interception. That is an interception. But because he sped, he sped him up and he had to get rid of it before he wanted to, it allowed Marcus to break on it and get a good pass deflection. But again, if Marcus has two healthy arms, that's a pick. That's a pick. Because he's in great position to pick that ball off. But again, it's tough for him to lift that, that left arm, so he just knocks it down. But by Queen speeding them up, that's the front end helping the back end out. Now on this one, they do a lot of games up front. And, and what I've learned, and I learned today, and again, you're never too old to learn. Some people call this, a uh, they call it an axe. They call it, well, not an axe. There was an axe stunt, and I, what's the other word? Um, ah, what was the B word? Ah, I can't remember what the B word was. I have to go back and look at Look up what I was thinking of. But they call this an axe stunt and a beef stunt. What they're doing is they're trying to create pressure or create havoc in the A gap or the B gap. I can't remember what they use for the B. But this is what it is. With Queen, and you'll see him. Like, this A gap opens wide, but he don't take it. He's going to take on number 60. He's going he's gonna, to – this thing is going to open extremely wide for him. He's not going to take it. He's going to come here, and he's going to pinball off of 60. And he's going to try to open it up for Matt of BK. But – they pick up Matt BK, and he's going to realize, oh, snap, I'm free. He's going to have a free shot at Tannehill. Just watch it. This is going to end up being his sack. See, see how it's opening up for him? But he don't take it. He's just going to pinball off a of 60. See, they end up picking up Matt BK. The running back picks up Matt BK, and he has a free shot at Tannehill. Blade is the B word. Axe and blade. That's what it is. So that's this this type of stunt happening in the B gap. They call it the blade. So they call it the axe and blade. You know, and this one right here. This is this was one of my favorite plays right here from PQ. A lot of stuff going on in this play. So he has the back. He has man coverage on the back. It's Tajay Spears. And you see, you saw him pick up. You know. Trying to check out and see what's going on. Now, Spears is halfway blocking, but Pierce, I mean, not Pierce, <laughs> but Queen don't just leave it, don't leave his responsibility, don't just, you know, see him blocking, don't shoot that gap and whatnot. He stays disciplined, stays disciplined. Because Spears, so Spears can leak out. So he stays with him just in case he leaks out. It's good in coverage. Now, at this point, Malik's running. So who's over there to, to cover that? You got Spears there to block, you got 55 coming to block. And you got the quarterback running. So who's left? Only PQ right now that's in the screen. Watch him get rid of the running back. Just watch. Get your lip butt out the way. Yeah. Now, at this point, because 55 assumed, assumed that the running back was going to block Queen. He didn't. So 55 just ran past him. Now, at this point, watch Queen go make the tackle. 
Watch Queen gonna make the tackle. Now there was a guy watching all this, just like me and you watching this, and and really appreciates this just as much as me and you appreciate this. The guy that watches and appreciates it is Marlo. Look at look at how Marlo is celebrating and because he appreciate he Marlo's coming from way back here, and he just as much as I'm explaining this to you, he's seeing all this just like I'm seeing all this, and he appreciates it. Watch the celebration. Because this took a lot. This took a lot. He had to stay disciplined with Spears. Then he had to defeat the block of Spears, get around 55, and make a solo tackle in open space. That's a good darn football play. That's a good darn football play. And a lot of people wanted to write this man off. I told y'all. I told y'all. Be patient. Be patient. Now, there are still detractors out there that said he's only playing like this. Because Roquan is here. I'm not going to say he's not. I'm not going to say he's not. All I will say is he was playing a heck of a lot better right before Roquan got here. But Roquan has probably been the greatest blessing to Pat Queen. Pat Pat Queen was ascending. But adding Roquan into into Pat Queen's life has been nothing but a blessing. Is Is he going to continue to be a Baltimore Raven? I have no clue. I have no clue, but the sky's the limit for Pat Queen, whether he continues to be a Baltimore Raven past this season or not, because he now has the blueprint. He now has the blueprint of what it takes to be an elite linebacker. And it's up to him to either lead another young fellow or to find another compliment to be an elite linebacker. But y'all know how I feel about PQ. I ain't going to keep rambling. I appreciate you guys for coming through. Like the video if you like the content. Subscribe if you have not done so already. And I appreciate you guys for coming through. Y'all know the motto, FTMF, film then more film because the film don't lie, unlike some people. This is Coach Evans with another PQ banger. See y'all soon, man. Peace.